Hey marketing leader, what's up? Today I'd like to talk to you about avoiding web design by committee. If you don't know what that means, it, it is basically when too many people try to influence the way website looks like without having any reasoning behind it. So if you have many stakeholders coming at you saying, mm, maybe that button should be yellow, mm, that paragraph could have been broken into two lines, like, you know, this kind of random thoughts that you have to either fight off or just accept as a given because you have to pick your battles none of that should really even happen no no you, you shouldn't have to be doing this at all we call this web design by committee i want to give you tools to make sure you actually align your team together and their ideas that flow from them to you and, and perhaps to an agency that you're working with they are in sync and agreed and actually make sense because there are data driven maybe uh, or if there's any plausible reasoning for them to implement uh, because otherwise we are just wasting your money and we're wasting everybody's time uh, if there's no value behind the change there's no real reason to to implement that change correct let's let's dive in a few points and i hope by the end of this video you will know what the web design by committee is why is it bad and how to avoid it really so let's go first thing first keep the process collaborative the more people you include in the process and decision making the better because i don't know if you are aware of ikea effect but the reason why people like ikea's furniture i mean one of many reasons perhaps but th this is a well-proven theory is that because they built them themselves they assemble the furniture that they use daily themselves. It makes them that much precious, valuable. And the same principle applies to web design or anything creative, really. If you get stakeholders to, you know, pitch in, to raise concerns and actually add something to the website of their own, they are less likely to then keep changing things, keep experimenting things and keep bothering you with random requests which don't really make any sense. One of the ways that we do it, and it's the main reason actually why we even offer something called design sprint, is because it aligns the teams. And I say plural teams because it also includes our team. Everyone in the room, because it's a, it's a workshop, if you don't know very, very quickly, everyone in that meeting room every attendee of that workshop works together towards a common goal without any discussion it's all tangible everyone is aligned and it's just perfect harmony and perfect environment in which we can build something great your website my first tip to you would be to keep the process collaborative that that is absolutely bare minimum that you have to do if you want to keep people vent of their worries and and keep them involved and then maybe they will leave you alone later on next thing on the list is something called design system and you might have come across that in your marketing career but i wouldn't blame you if you haven't because it comes from product design world and it, it finds its way into web design occasionally too we are big fans of design systems especially the atomic design system variation here at NerdCow. but the bottom line is a design system creates this, this shared language that gets used across your organization for everything that's external in, in simple terms. So think of anything that gets exposed to public, to your customer, email marketing campaigns, e like emails, overall newsletters, right? Any advertisement, uh, any Google ads, landing pages, social media posts, anything that you create and publish it can take the inspiration from design system so all of that is unified and actually follows your brand guidelines your tone of voice and at whichever point the customer decides to interact with your brand they get the same experience very important and that also includes a website right so it just makes sense for us to use design system for website because then marketing teams get to recycle that design system for other activities to give you an example and maybe a different perspective on a design system we can call it the single source of truth because nothing gets into a design system without being validate validated and and proven that it's actually required so no one of ideas like actually on this 
particular landing page out of 100 landing pages that we have this one needs to have pink button instead of a blue one there is no way we can build a pink button on that one particular landing page unless you justify its existence beyond that landing page so it serves like a wall that division between nonsense and actual valuable work to give you an example how how it works in real life a design system would comprise a button and let's just stick to the most prominent and most beautiful example of an element on the website a button i think is the most important one by the way so you have to get it right but anyway button in a design system you would have a button and all its variations you could play around with it you can type in the label see how it breaks how it behaves what's it like when when you hover it when you press it is it accessible etc etc and then you can easily export that button and use it in hubspot crm or in your plain email to a customer or you can export it, screenshot it whatever and send someone in I don't know software engineering department to use in your proprietary application maybe it's nice shared library of elements on your website that you can propagate across the organization and use anywhere you like you can even print it if you want it's great we love it you will love it too use design system it really really helps to streamline all the work all the communication and saves ton of money next you will want to rely on the data in another video i mentioned that we often think that other people browse the website the way we do it's false that's just not true you have to remove yourself from the picture to to not fall into a trap of, of following a biased opinion or your own intuition and many people in your organization might not be in that mindset might not be that well informed as you are but it is your role as a marketing leader who leads the web design project with an agency to explain to them that their opinion is valuable but unless they prove to them that this is a good decision good route good path to follow to replace uh, something in the banner or maybe introduce an entire new section or reshuffle the content you won't do it because up to this point whatever you have works and you have no way of knowing without testing if that new change new requirement new adjustment let's call it will actually help or work against you in the long run make sure every decision that you make relies on any kind of data and if you have no data for something and you just speculate go and find that data for yourself if you are thinking about changing your h1 a heading on the website do a b testing or send out surveys run a poll on the website we'll have another video on how to get customer feedback on your website soon but for now just don't rush into making a decision and don't let other people make those decisions for you as well because then the website becomes everyone's and as a result no one's that's a typical example of web design by committee rely on the data once again next point is transparent communication and that is kind of might be the same as the keep the process collaborative because in collaboration you talk a lot but also you know using that design sprint workshop as an example everything that happens in the room stays in the room in a way so when that workshop is done the project carries on for another week and week you will want the, to keep those people in loop and plus everyone else that wasn't in that workshop too so perhaps you have deputy ceo or maybe ceo themselves that couldn't attend the workshop but they are obviously an important stakeholder in the company you will want to keep them uh, in the loop of what's going on you would have to want them you will you will want to keep them educated about the decisions that you are making uh, for for them in regards to the website so there are many tools to go about we use basecamp we just create one big room where we post announcements there's also live chat available if if people choose to talk to each other but we just post regular updates on there like this week we've done this 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 because this 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 and everyone is in line in the loop and if someone has something to say about it perhaps a person that wasn't in workshops comments on that post saying but i just 
you know, that they don't agree with something, we just talk to them, explain to them using user interview recordings or any surveys that we run by that point. We can handle that. But if everyone chips in, it's just big, huge mess. So again, transparent communication, because people that feel left out of the process are most likely to actually cause trouble down the line. For your own sake, keep the comms going frequently. Final point on my list is a big one. And I don't expect you to implement this right away. You might not even be in a position to do it, but it's something to be really aware of. It is company's culture. Culture to change, culture to adapt, culture to accept imperfections. Oh, maybe one more thing. And maybe culture to create that kind of division of responsibility and accountability. When it comes to working in, in that kind of fast pacing environment, needless to say, perfection is really not achievable. And to be honest, you, you should never strive for, for perfection. Uh, perfection kills progress and we want progress as soon as possible because the sooner we progress, make any progress, the sooner we'll learn from it. And that's golden. That's what we need. Some companies might object to it. And for, those, for that reason, companies will have product cycles two years long, whereas we would have one week long, maybe, or two weeks long, because we just get things out. Just, just throw them out and see what happens, basically. So there's a difference in mindset. There's different in approach. And obviously, the larger organization is, the farther their, their culture is from, from sort of being agile and transparent and, and adaptive, the longer it will take and almost why I said it might not be possible to actually commit to those kinds of principles. I wouldn't blame you if this is a difficult spot for you to be in. If you have uh, someone from, from the executive teams from C-suite uh, that, you know, is not in that mindset, whereas you are, there might be friction, but I just wanted to make you aware that you should always strive to keep going. Just keep pushing things out, keep learning from your mistakes, release as soon as possible. Quick loops of feedback are always the best and gets you much, much further in the field than had you waited for, I don't know, half a year to release anything. And by the time you're done, market has moved on and they no longer need whatever you produced and you wasted money effectively. This vision is so difficult to convey and to convince people who are not in it. It, it, it is, it feels so strange to some that, you know, what, I shouldn't be perfect or my company shouldn't be perfect. The product that we're offering shouldn't be perfect. No, it shouldn't because you will never get to perfection and that means you will never release anything. You will never help anyone. You'll decrease the morale of your team because for because of the crunch. It's just not worth it. What I'm saying is if you are noticing web design by committee pattern in your company, those tools that I've given you in this video, which is a collaborative approach, design system and data driven decision making might not be enough to implement a different approach and, and to sort of battle that design by committee if your company's culture and the C-suite people don't feel like it. We've seen an example in one of our clients where the marketing team would 100% sign, uh, sign up for this kind of fast pacing environment of working and that agile spirit where we just release quick, quick, bam, 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 punch after punch, we just learn progress, keep reaping benefits, users are happy, etc., etc. But then there comes someone in power and says, do this and you have nothing to say because well what are you gonna say that's what i mean so culture is a top-down thing if you're stuck in between hammer and anvil i feel sorry for you you might think about maybe hiring another coach that can transition your company into being a bit more flexible and uh, adaptive i'm not sure but but just so you're aware of this problem too and that's really it that's all i wanted to say in this video please stay around we have many more videos on on running website and avoiding common mistakes etc have a look around our youtube channel but for now that's all from me i look forward to hearing your comments uh, here on youtube and i will see you in the next video thanks so much for watching bye bye see ya